come back to another new and exciting video. I'm so excited to share with you this two exciting, beautiful country in Europe that you could go and visit. Or you could actually go there as a student. Or if you want, you could actually move to those countries entirely and you are going to have a peaceful life. I'm not just going to be sharing those two countries with you. I'm going to be guiding you step by step on the visa application, what you have to have for you to go and apply for the visa. And the visa is straightforward and easy. If you watch this video to the end, it's going to guide you on what you are supposed to have before you apply for this visa. Before we jump into the video, Please, if you enjoy any content that I create here, please kindly subscribe to this channel and take a moment to give this video a huge thumbs up. I would really appreciate it and that way it's going to help me create more video and YouTube algorithm is going to move this video to those that I wouldn't want it the most. So, first on my list is going to be Slovenia. Slovenia is a country that is in Europe. And for you to get to Slovenia, you are going, you are supposed to have a Schengen visa. I know a lot of people struggle trying to get a Schengen visa because when they talk about Schengen visa, they think about moving to Germany. They think about going to Spain or going to Italy or maybe going to all the big country, Austria, Netherlands. These big countries, they are designed to take your money. Yes, they are designed to just take your money. You could actually spin the wheel around, go get your Schengen visa from the smaller country, and then eventually, if you want to, and move to the bigger countries. And that is what people have been doing, and it's working for them. But people don't know those three. You see, a lot of agents will come out and tell you, hey, we need you. I'm going to get you an invitation for you to go visit Germany. This invitation does not guarantee your visa. Invitation is just a piece of paper where someone states that I, blah, 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 will be responsible for your stay. And when you come, you stay here, you're feeding, your accommodation, and all of all that. In the eye of the CEO, the visa officer, it does not guarantee nothing. So take a moment to watch this video to the end. That way you can start applying all this trick that I'm going to share with you right now and start applying for your own visa without worrying for anything, okay? That is what I do on this channel to help you confidently achieve your immigration journey. If you want to apply for a Slovenian visa, what you need to do is the first fill out the visa application form. I have my notes right here that I'm going to be looking. You fill out the application form. You make sure you have a valid passport. You make sure you have an identity photo. You make sure you have an insurance. You make sure you have a travel itinerary, which is going to be your flight ticket, okay? You make sure you pay for your visa fee and also your financial needs. And again, you make sure you have an invitation letter or you have a place to stay that is what the agents won't tell you they call that invitation letter you need an invitation you don't actually need that invitation letter the only reason why you're going to need an invitation letter or you think an invitation letter is going to favor you is when you have somebody in the country that you're going to visit that is when it's okay for you to say hey uncle hey brother can you please send me an invitation letter? Let's say I don't have anybody that can send me an invitation letter and I have all the things that they require. Does that mean I cannot go visit? No, I can. I can actually book myself a hotel where I'll be staying, which is proof of your accommodation. Because like I said, that's what the invitation letter also covered. Because if I'm providing my proof of financial statement that I can sponsor myself, I think I should be able to book myself a place to stay and that's why it's called Taurus. okay but we're going to come back to that okay let's go back let's rewind back to the application okay now when you're filling out the application it's the most crucial part of this this whole application is the most crucial part of the visa okay make sure you fill out your application correctly 
have spell your name correctly the same way it's on your passport make sure you have your date of birth correct make sure you have your address correct make sure every detail that you provide on your application it's not false make sure it's verifiable because that is the top notch of the whole process that's why they're going to scrutinize and which is easy what is there for you to fill out my name your address and all of you don't need anybody to do that for you that is all they are asking for on the application form the next is your photo id your identity photo okay and the photo id the only thing they are requesting for is for you to have a white background if you go to the photographer tell them you're about to take a picture for your visa they know the size but just in case they don't know the size that they require here is going to be for your photo eye is going to be 3.5 by 4 by 7 centimeter i will repeat that again it's going to be 3.5 by 4.5 centimeter that is what your identity photo should look like and you should have a white background it's acceptable another thing is you make sure the photo it's not taken in the last six months i know most of us we take a passport photo and we'll put them in our wallets don't think you can just go yank out stuff that is in your wallet that have been there for maybe two or three years and you think you can use it to say hey i'm going to attach that to my application you know it's going to get a kickback okay so make sure you take a recent photo that shows what you look like recently that's all they are asking for in time of your identity photo okay travel insurance travel insurance a lot of people are going to pump out to tell you oh i can get you a travel insurance let me tell you the amount they require in your travel insurance is thirty thousand euro don't let that bother you you see the first time i heard about travel insurance I was scared like where am i going to see thirty thousand euro they have an insurance broker that they can actually give you a quote of this insurance that is going to carry up to thirty thousand dollars in medical and that is what they're asking for you can get them as low as hundred dollars depending on where you are in the world depending on what country you're watching this video you could ask for insurance broker and ask them to give you a quote that you need a travel insurance medical travel insurance you need a quote those insurance broker they're going to run a quote and come back with different numbers some might be as low as 80 for the thirty thousand dollars for the thirty thousand euro so it that is just all you need it does not say you have to have a thirty thousand euro for your medical no that is what was on my head back then so don't blame me i don't know what was insurance at the time so but now i'm trying to help most of you that you get scared when you hear about travel insurance you don't have to pay thirty thousand dollars okay you do not all you have to have is just get an insurance broker get a quote and for the most cheapest one that you can ever get and just attach that to your application okay another one is travel itinerary the travel itinerary it's your flight ticket okay you don't have to have the ticket confirmed you can have an your agent book you a travel insurance i mean a travel itinerary you can also do that to yourself online you just go to the airline that you're going to be flying you know the day you're going to be departing that you have on your application form and you know what your return date is you put there and you see some airline might require you to pay a couple of change some agents might require you to pay something but not having a travel itinerary it's not a reason for your visa to get denied the embassy or the consulate just have it there okay you can actually get a travel insurance from anywhere you can do it yourself or whatever you you get the gist okay so you could actually have that attached and you'll be good you won't have i can i've never seen an, anybody that would deny anybody visa just because of travel itinerary no it's not possible okay so that is that then you pay your visa fee most of the consulate would direct you on where to pay which bank you are going to pay your visa fee they will give you a guideline 
you have to go to this bank and this is how much you're supposed to pay and you attach the receipt the teller whatever they gave you to your application okay so that is it financial means your financial means now what they're asking for your financial means this is slovenia you have to have about 70 to be able to spend about 70 dollars 70 euros i keep saying dollars because i'm in the us 70 euros okay guys 70 euros so you have to have about 70 euros to spend per day so let's say you are going to be spend spending about seven to uh, 14 days in slovenia so you have to multiply that 70 euros times number of days but that does not mean that you have to have just that amount try to have more extra you know so that that is actually going to help to boost your visa to show that you have the financial means to support yourself and again the last that i'm going to talk about here is the accommodation proof of accommodation or an invitation i know i kind of talked a little bit about it at the beginning of this video but i tell you what if you don't have a family in slovenia you can go to bookings.com you can go to hotels.com you can go to whichever website that you're using and make it as a hotel reservation and you attach that to your application and you are going to be good for you to put this application together boom submit it to the consulate or to the embassy and you are good to go you see like all these steps that i listed this is something you could do so tell me why would you want to go pay somebody to do all this for you and at the end of the day, the person, it's whatever they are doing, it's not guaranteed. Because this is the same thing. They might watch this video, take this step, and you know, as a kid, and get your visa, or maybe you know, they wouldn't favor them, but this is something that you could do yourself, okay? So that being said, these are the steps that you need. In case if there is any part of this video that you are kind of you need more clarification please comment on this video and I'm going to respond to you and clarify what I mean and how you can go about it, okay? Now, let's talk about Slovenia. Why Slovenia? Slovenia, why Slovenia has the most easiest visa in Europe? It's because the country, the, do you know that the unemployment in Slovenia is about 4.18%, 4.18% compared to spain spain is about 28.0 percent italy is about 24.7 percent sweden is about 22.1 percent so you can see people don't talk much about this country their unemployment is really pretty low and you can actually get there and begin to live a better life like you have a good job you're not going to be stressed out and the cost of living, the cost of renting a one-bedroom apartment in Slovenia, it's somewhere around 450 euro to 500 euro, which is not bad at all compared to here in the United States, where we pay about 12 to 1500 just for one bedroom, depending on the area where you live. If you live in the big city, you are looking nothing less than three thousand dollars. So, you know and it's at the end of the day it's all about better life okay so like the taxi you can take an, a taxi on uber in slovenia for less than five euro you can actually afford your meal for a whole day for less than 15 euro you can be paying for your internet for anywhere between 20 to 30 euro per month so depending on what you're doing as a job, I think Slovenia, it's really good for somebody who is actually starting their immigration journey or somebody who want to go to a country where they can settle down and relax with their family Why they, you know, put up themselves and, you know, grow on with their life. So that is Slovenia. If you need any more clarification, please let me know. I am going to do my best to help you to clarify what I mean. So let's get back to the second country I'm going to talk about. It's Bulgaria. Bulgaria is not a member of a Schengen country, but they are member of European Union, the EU. Okay. So for you to get to Bulgaria, you don't actually need a Schengen visa. What you actually need, you have to apply for a Bulgarian visa. And you are still going to take the same step. Make sure you fill out your visa application form 
make sure you pay the visa fee make sure you have your travel itinerary make sure you have your um insurance and make sure you have a proof of accommodation you know so make sure you take a photograph the same size that i did mention before that's what you're going to need and you put them up together and you submit you pay your visa fee you submit it to the embassy or the consulate depending on what is in your country so the visa application it's almost the same but the only thing is you if you're applying for a uh, bulgarian visa you have to apply to get a bulgarian visa you are going to bulgarian it's not a schengen country but it's a good place to start you can actually move to bulgarian you know become a resident in bulgarian and if you want to go to a schengen country it's going to be easier for you to go to it's very easier bulgaria has a border with romania has a border with greece norway and they also have a border with tokyo so you see you have a good country that surround you unlike Slovak slovenia that has a border with sweden i think they have a border with sweden italy austria hungary and croatia so i'm talking about the border that surround slovenia right now you know and i'm actually going to make another video about croatia i love croatia i've been to croatia and the country was so nice but as a matter of fact since i've lived here in the united states and all around the world i barely see people talking about croatia but this country they are really really good country to go visit you're going to love it absolutely i lived there for a couple of months i love it and i know you are going to like it so well okay so if you need any more clarification on this video please contact me let me know subscribe like and i will see you guys on my next video peace